At this point in time, we call to the podium the Honorable Prime Minister of Dominica, Honorable Roosevelt Scary. Thank you very much. I, I thought that um, the new mayor had an, an exceptional speech. And uh, it's a speech that could have been delivered even at the United Nations. <laughs> it's sort of a, a speech of high quality. Let me first of all recognize the presence of His Excellency, Mr. Charles Savary, our president, and Mrs. Savary. Honorable Gloria Schillenford, Minister for Social Services and Community Development. Honorable Ian Douglas, our parliamentary representative for the Portsmouth Constituency and Minister for Tourism and Legal Affairs. Honorable Reginald Ostry, our Pal Rep for Cottage and Minister for Lands, Housing, Water, and Settlement. Let me, in a special way, recognize our dear Deacon, Deacon Waldron, who prayed for us. Also, our Commissioner of Oaths, Mrs. Anita Rodney. My cabinet colleagues were here with us. Uh, the mayor and the councillors and all the distinguished residents of Portsmouth were here this evening. Let me greet all of you and to say how happy I am to be here in Portsmouth. Um, as you know, I attended the Portsmouth Secondary School for a couple of years, and I also taught at the Portsmouth Secondary School for a few years. So I am, in fact, um, from Portsmouth and, be, and part of Portsmouth. And I want to, first of all, congratulate the new councillors for their own elections to the council, but to also commend them for coming forward to indicate to the people of Portsmouth and Dominica that they too want to play their part in nation building. Because in this country, because of the advent of talk shows, there are a lot of people who, who talk a lot and do very little. Um, so it's important for us to come forward in a demonstrated manner to um, say that I am prepared to play my part in the advancement, and in this case, in the, to the town of Portsmouth. Portsmouth, we continue to maintain, has a lot to offer Dominica. And if we can achieve our vision for Portsmouth, I believe it would certainly assist in transforming not only the way of life of those of us from the north of Dominica, but the entire country. And this is why the government over the years have diligently sought to bring about that kind of transformation to Portsmouth. Sometimes people say we have not done much in Portsmouth. But if we go back and reflect on what this government inherited in the town of Portsmouth when it came to office in 2000, I remember walking the streets of Glanville, the streets of Zikak, and don't even mention Chance where most, you know, all of his roads were dirt roads, very muddy. And we had to go and embark on a major campaign to help improve the road network in the town of Portsmouth and the other communities which make up the town. You'll recall that we sought to introduce a diagnostic center at the Portsmouth Hospital. We introduced um, extra machines and several other diagnostic um, equipment. And I, I'm a bit saddened that we in the government, in the Ministry of Health, did not make sufficient good use of those investments um, at the Portsmouth Hospital. Because we always felt that it was totally unacceptable that for us to have a urine test done, we had to send the sample all the way to Roseau. And we felt that we could have it up here in, in, in Portsmouth to service the entire north so that to make the provision of healthcare more accessible and more efficient to our, our, our people in Portsmouth and the north of Dominica. It is our hope, and we have made provisions in this year's budget to, 
to expand the Possum Hospital, to upgrade it and to expand it. And I will say to the mayor, uh, Mr. Titus Francis, when you spoke about the university and being, uh, Possum being a university town, we are in fact in discussions with Ross University with a view to entering into a management contract with Ross um, for the Possum Hospital, um, which will certainly help improve the delivery of healthcare services to the entire north of Dominica. And one can appreciate the vast um, human resources and expertise which we have at Ross University, which will now be available to all of us who live in this part of the country. We have sought to, again, through the development of infrastructure, the, up the restoration of the Cabrits, the Fort Shirley, which is, which is not very much spoken about in Dominica. And it is unfortunate because this is part of our heritage. And when you go to other countries and they tell you about their, their, their forts and so on, and you go there and you compare it to Cabrits, it is chalk and cheese. And we really must commend Dr. Honeychurch and the men and women who are working up there for the tremendous work they have done in seeking to transform this place. And when, we, when I went up there and Reggie would remember some years ago, and I said, I would like this place to be where it could be the best place to host activities. And some people laughed and said, but you know, you can't go host any activities here, a restaurant and so forth. But we have seen it transformed to that level where if you want to have any kind of ceremony for it to be successful and the best ambience, the best place and only place to go is up at the Cabrits. And we will continue to make resources available next week. I shall be making available to Dr. Honeychurch and his crew an additional $50,000 to continue the works at the, at the Cabrits. And we just concluded, of course, the Moroccan Hotel, there were some challenges. We're now overcoming those challenges. And we also have concluded the, an agreement. We shall sign this agreement next month, November, God willing, um, with the range developers for the construction of the 125 um, villa complex um, resort under the economic synergy program. And once that comes into stream, one can appreciate the benefits that would bring to the people of Portsmouth and North of Dominica in so far as employment is concerned, in so far as the farmers benefiting, the taxi operators, and all of us who would be involved in landscaping and other activities in the tourism industry. I have taken note of the comments of the old former mayor, Mr. Seja, and also the new mayor, Mr. Francis. I, am, I will hand over later today, this evening, um, some checks totaling $550,000 to the council. That will cover various projects, including the installation of the lights on Benjamin's Park. As you, read, as you know, some time ago we gave $175,000 for the, the lights. That, I understand, was only sufficient to have purchased the infrastructure. You need now to, 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 to build the stand and, and, and so forth, and you need an additional $80,000 to, to purchase this. I've been told also that the the wonderful people who work so diligently seeking to keep Portsmouth clean sometimes do not have the tools of trade required um, to perform the task. And I, I've been told that the estimate for that is about $20,000, and we will make this available to you also. I have taken note of the tipper truck and the garbage truck. You know me, and I do not make promises which I cannot keep. I can give you one this year, but the council will determine which one you want, you need. And once you determine which one you need, you want, or the tipper truck and the garbage truck, we can make the money available, available to you in November of 2014 to purchase either the tipper truck or the garbage truck. And hopefully in 2015, God willing, once the resource is available, we will make the other one available to you. So I cannot give you, I cannot promise both of them at the same time. We can give you only one. So you determine it, and the chairman will write to me, and we shall make for the power rep, and we'll make, you, make the uh, one available. 
The other major project which you will see coming on stream next year is the construction of a government complex. It is, in my view, unacceptable in the second decade of the 21st century for us not to know where the education office is and for us to be searching for government offices. We need to have a central location where every service the government provides can be fetched in one building. And this is a commitment um, we shall make, and that will involve, that would include a number of other facilities and offices, including the office of the Member of Parliament and hopefully um, the, the Mayor's office. So we certainly in 2015 will construct the new government complex for Portsmouth. On a more personal note, I know of three, gen three people here in Portsmouth personally. The first person is, is, is Mark Claren, as we know. Her real name is Claren Joseph. And the other person is Rumpel Skinskino. I call him Rumpel Skinskino. <laughs> but Rumpel, uh, Mr. Vivian Remy. And of course, Raphael Hector of Glanville. I have said to both the Member of Parliament for Portsmouth, Honorable Ian Douglas, and the Minister for Housing, that we should begin, and in case of Raphael, complete his home with immediate effect. But with regards to Rumpel, Rumpel and McLaren, that we should commence the construction of his homes within two weeks. And we should build new homes for these um, two um, individuals. And I will, I will personally oversee the construction of his two homes, his three homes for his three families. Sometimes people ask, what is the government doing to address the issue of unemployment? And this government has sought to address unemployment from a number of fronts. Through the aid bank, for example, we when we came into office, there was no lender in this world, including the Caribbean Development Bank, which was willing to lend money to the aid bank. Because at the time of government involvement in the lending practices of the bank, and really contaminating the whole process involved in the proper and prudent management of financial institution. I, as Minister of Finance, invited the IMF to Dominica to do a review and examination of the aid bank for us. And they provided us with a report. And the cabinet decided to implement certain aspects of the report, because the other aspect we did not agree with the IMF on. And as a result of uh, numerous changes which we, make, we made to the bank, we were able to go to the Caribbean Development Bank and start borrowing from the CDB. But further to that, this government went out and negotiated with the European Investment Bank and the bandits from Venezuela loans at cheaper or lower interest. Because when we came into office, you would contract a loan at the aid bank for as high as 12%. And so, for example, with the loans from Venezuela, we borrowed at 3% with a maximum spread of 3%, making it a mandatory 6%, no more than 6% to those who would like to borrow from the bank. So we have reduced the interest rates from at the aid bank from 12% to an average of about 7% making lending cheaper for investors, reducing on the, on the cost of their projects, and thereby creating more jobs in the economy. And I will dare say about 99% of hotels and guest houses that have been constructed in Dominica in recent time have all received loans from the aid bank. And it is because of the government's efforts out to go out there to negotiate for loans, better terms, for the aid bank to, le to lend to the private sector. In agriculture, for example, we place loans at the aid bank at 0% interest to farmers. And another facility at 50-50, which means if you borrowed 
$40,000 from the aid bank, 20,000 of that amount would be a grant, and the balance of 20,000 would be at an interest rate of 2%. There is no way in the Caribbean you would hear of those kind of interest rates. And we have done so to make investments in agriculture more affordable for farmers. But in many respects sometimes, people do not honor the agreements. So people are not paying back as quickly and based on the agreements. And therefore, you have a challenge in terms of the revolving aspect of the loan facility. And the government itself has gone into investing. Investing in, in, in hotel plants, not because we want to own a hotel, but because we feel, because there is a gap, we needed to come fill the gap as a government to create that kind of economic impetus, thereby creating jobs in the economy. Then you had the issue of the night landing, improvement to the airport. I mean, those of us who would have traveled before would know sometimes you are on a Liat flight at 4 o'clock. And Liat would come to tell you those for Dominica would have to step, go down, because by the time we get to Dominica, it will be too dark to land. And people go on to St. Vincent and other countries in the Caribbean. And by the, the introduction of night landing into Dominica, we have extended the opening and closing hours for Dominica, thereby allowing more people to have greater time to be able to transact business with Dominica and, and tourist and so on. And this is why, and this is what we have done. Things which governments and we Dominicans felt were impossible, and governments told us they could not have done it. This Labour Party government has come in, has, we, have, we analyze the situation, and we have put our hands to the plow, and we have been doing things in this country that many governments could not have done before. We have taken bold decisions that the Dominican people are benefiting from today. You recall in 2004, just a matter of about three months after became, becoming Prime Minister of this country, we decided to end a 21-year relationship with Taiwan and to recognize the One China policy. And many Dominicans who question the wisdom in that decision. But today, we understand that China is one of our best allies in our economic and social development. Because we understand as a party, as a government, the challenges confronting our country and what we need to do together to overcome those challenges. You would hear the opposition criticizing the National Employment Program. You see, there are some people in this country who would like to see Dominica as a backward state where people are suffering, people are hungry, people are unemployed, so they can say, ah, look what scary do to Dominica. They do not like to see people happy. They do not like to see people with smiles and people talking about their new home, their new washroom. Every single initiative that this government has put forward in this country, the opposition has criticized it, including the SWK program by calling the senior citizens of our country. People who have worked their lives under difficult and strenuous circumstances, criticizing these things. The, the school transportation program, the free textbook for students, they criticize those things. And then you hear them talk about their social program will be from the, from the cradle to the grave, from which cradle and from which grave. So, at the National Employment Program, when we, when we launched the program in, 2000, in 2013, December, our original target was 400. But we saw the need to expand it into different areas. Not only those of us who would have graduates from university should have been employed, but others who were involved in agriculture, in tourism, in community enhancement programs. So we extended these things to the communities. And today, we have 1,400 Dominicans employed under the National Employment Program. And the wage bill for this every month is in excess of $900,000. That's what we pay every month out to people in, who are employed under the NEP. But it's not only about a short-term job, because those persons who we have trained in the hospitality, they, have, they, will, they, have, they will get jobs 
in the tourism industry because they're trained now. Those who are involved in carpentry will be able to get employment because they will have a skill which they did not have prior to the NEP. Those who are involved in the stone cutting program, the restoration of the, of the old walls, the stone walls, they have been able to learn a skill that they can now go and offer it to the rest of us in this country. And that's what we have done. That's what we're seeking to, go, to do is to give practical experience and practical skills to our young people who otherwise could not find employment. And we believe that the NEP has made a tremendous difference in the lives of many families across Dominica. And people are seeing the difference. But people will criticize, but we have to forge ahead as a party, as a government, to do what we believe is in the best interest of Dominica. And that's the pledge we've always given to our people, that we shall, we shall work hard in their best interest. And every decision we take, which we take will always be in the best interest of, the, of all Dominicans. And every single Dominican is enjoying the improved infrastructure. Every Dominican is enjoying this, this, the creation and the establishment of the State College, for example. And the fact that when we came into office, only 7% of all high school graduates had access to the college. Today, as I speak, it is 87% because of the government's concerted investments in the state college. Many students, and my friend there, we, we worked together for some years. She would tell you the number of students who were turned back, not because they did not get the grades to come into the school, but because the system was only accepting a certain number of students. And how can we have a society, how can we build a country if we do not place education at the center of our developmental process? And that's what the Labour Party has done for Dominica. And we do not sit there and wait for somebody to offer us scholarships. We go out there and negotiate on behalf of the Dominican people scholarships. So when we went to speak to China about an economic package, the first agenda item was scholarships. Because we recognize that training and educating and giving our young people, our people, our citizens a skill must be paramount in any government's efforts. And this is why I am happy, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Mayor, that you mentioned about ensuring that the young people who are dropouts, that we allow them to have a second chance in life. We have to reach out to them. We should know as a council every single child of school age and to know whether this child is in school or not in school. And if this child is not in school, what he or she needs to be in school. And we must provide his parents with those needs to allow that child to be in school. Because all our children of school age must be in school. If they're out of school, they will be engaging themselves in activities which we not want them to involve themselves in. So even if you don't have children, every child in Portsmouth must be considered to be our child. So I'm very, very grateful for this. I want to also publicly recognize the efforts of the Member of Parliament, Ms. Honorable Ian Douglas. Some people would have had issues with Ian, but you will agree that over the last few months, Ian has demonstrated great leadership in the town of Portsmouth. And he told me that he has, he is staying very far from the spirit of man. And that has, and, and, and so, so our hope and prayer is that he will continue to stay very far from that spirit and, and follow the spirit of God and as he has been preaching in, in, in church and so on. So, so I think with a better function in Palre and a council that has, that, that has come forward and people who have come forward to say that we are going to take charge of Portsmouth. We are going to guide the development of Portsmouth. And I can say to you, that Portsmouth is in good hands and in safe hands. And to all who say to you that you have the absolute support of the entire government and myself personally as the Prime Minister of this country. And I look forward to coming to see you and I'll be there with you next, next three years where I shall address you in my capacity as the Prime Minister of Dominica. <laughs> Because, as I have said, because I do not like to speak politics in the presence of the president. 
and also a church leader. But I'm in, I'm in post month today, so I am intending to say a few words. But this party, this Dominican Labour Party, has performed under trying and difficult circumstances. And when you look around the region and we hear of the serious challenges confronting some of our friends in the region, of salary cuts and job losses, not having resources to respond to basic needs of the citizens, we have to thank God for the many blessings he has bestowed on us here in Dominica. And these things could not have been achieved without the support and understanding of the people of Dominica. Because you know you have families and you go through difficult circumstances sometimes. But you have to continue persevering. And I can say to you, at the center of all we have done and we continue to do as a party is our genuine and sincere love for this country and for the citizens. And that is what we'll continue to offer you, a sincere heart a sincere commitment to working with you to build Dominica. So I look forward to the next elections. I look forward to it. I am ready. And I know you have told me you are ready and so on. So, so, so put on your armor and your breastplate. And I want to I want to thank you, you know. I want to thank all of you. I want to thank all of you for your commitment to Portsmouth. We know the challenges in Portsmouth. We know what we have to do. It's a matter of us remaining committed to the task. And to say to you that this government, this Labour Party government, will never ever forget the people of Portsmouth and the town of Portsmouth. I want to thank you very much. I want to thank you very much and to say to you, I will be back in due time so we can discuss other matters of state. Thank you very much. God bless you. But before, before I leave, I want to hand over the, the, the checks totaling $550,000 to the chairman, to the mayor. The mayor. You know, I, I always think that this thing, I mean, we have to take this thing a, a, a notch further because I have said to the minister that we should commission um, a couple mayoral chains because, you know, and, and maybe have the mayor put on a sash. You know, we have to take this thing to the next level. You know, um, so I'm hoping that the next um, um, mayor will have a proper mayoral chain, not only here in, in, um, in, in, in Portsmouth, but also in, in Rosa and so on. So, Mr. Mayor, you have resources and you can hit the road running. Okay? And I believe that is the intention. And when we keep, when we start running, we shall not stop until the task is over. Thank you very much. <laughs>